Well, hey there, Diet Disruptors. I am so excited to introduce you to Nicole because Nicole has lots to share. But really, the first thing I want to do is introduce you to Teddy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh, look how beautiful he is. How old is he? Um, he just turned four months. Oh my gosh, Nicole. That is yeah. awesome. I'm so glad he's at this interview. <laughs> So no, the reason why I wanted to interview you, Nicole, is because when we first started talking, you had come to me and said, you've literally done everything, everything there was prior to working with me. And in a lot of ways, I assume there was some skeptical kind of being, you were skeptical a little bit because it's like, how many more things can you try without feeling like you're really getting anywhere, right? So talk a little bit about, A, what made you decide to say, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. And like, what was different about this than other things that you've done? Sure, sure. So just a little background. This has been a lifelong struggle. And I have hired professional after professional after professional, I think, if I go back and, and actually do a tally, I think I've gone through about 12 rounds with, you know, a traditional nutritionist, wow. you know, doing the program, you know, doing their programs, doing all of those things, worked with probably about three or four different doctors, endocrinologists, like all the things, everything. And every time that it would come back to it would be, well, why isn't this working? And I, you know, would get so frustrated because I am, um, I heard you talk about the Enneagram the other day yeah, yeah. and I am a number three. So I work the plan. I am an achiever. I'm going to do it 150%, like absolutely perfect. So there's no reason why this shouldn't work for me. So fast forward to, you know, I have him, I'm in the thick of it. I know a lot about nutrition just out of necessity. So I've heard it all. I, you know, I'm like, okay, so what, what could be possibly be different, but there's got to be something. And at this point, I knew that my choices were go back to a traditional nutritionist and they're going to say to me, cut more calories, exercise more. And I, I just didn't have the time to spend two hours working out to burn off the little bit of food, you know, that I was going to eat in a day. Yes. And I already eat all the superfoods and all the things. And plus I have to make an appointment and, you know, and actually go meet with the nutritionist. So I was like, this is not going to work for. And it's expensive. You pay a lot too. Yes. And, and funny enough, the, so the last, um, prior to, um, having him, I've been working with someone, um, because of some fertility issues and some hormones and stuff. And they had just gotten to the point where they referred me to this other doctor and his suggestion was all these, um, you know, basically eating like pro like meal replacements all day long. Oh. I'm like, so you're telling me that instead of eating the healthy food that I'm eating, that I should be eating all these chemicals, like this, it didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. So I knew that doing this, okay, you're telling me I'm going to eat real food. And there, there's got to be something else that is, is different. So when I entered the challenge and, you know, I knew that I could commit to 10 to 15 minutes a day, you know, with, with the lessons. And, I, and all I needed to do was kind of find a rhythm for how I was going to incorporate this and actually feed myself instead of living off of coffee because of <laughs> sleep deprivation. Exactly. <laughs> um, and I knew a lot of the stuff that you, you know, had put in the challenge. But the difference was, the timing and, and doing it per meal. It was so crazy to me that that one little tweak, because I've counted my macros before, but done I know you know all about protein, fats, and carbs. Yes. So just making that change immediately after the first day, I was like, how is, how is this not the basis for, for everybody, for everything? It because makes so the diet, much more sense. Listen, the diet industry doesn't want you to know because then you don't have to keep searching anymore. Right. But what's frustrating is going to a traditional nutritionist, I'm eating all the superfoods, I'm counting my macros, but I'm having this, you know, big salad with tons of walnuts and peaches and chia seeds and all these things that when I'm looking back on it, 
realizing that yes, it's tons of superfoods and healthy foods, but it was totally off balance and would totally spike my blood sugar. Yep. And when you spike and your blood sugar, you store fat. Yes. So I, and, and, and another, you know, background piece too is, um, so I had gone through, um, you know, a period where I had lost a ton of weight and it was prior to that I had, you know, doing blood work, like all on the inside, super healthy. I lost a ton of weight through deprivation, like all of those types of things. I was so unhealthy. I was anemic. My eyes were sinking in. I, I mean, it was like I had fatigue, adrenal fatigue, all of these things that is, is just proof that you have to eat food to yeah. nourish your body. And so when I came across this, knowing that I was going to eat real food and you were just going to teach me how to tweak it, I was just blown away by just that little difference it had such a big impact. So, so exciting. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I just prayed before you started because I'm like, this has to work for her, please. I felt so confident, but at the same time, there's that little bit of like, she's going to do like this many professionals before me. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now who am I <laughs> to be able to make this or help her through this? And whenever I would get the text messages from you and just hear about the more and more success that you would have, I was like, oh, I, like I knew it, but it just felt good to know, like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just so happy for you. Yeah. That. And I've been, I did the challenge. So I know that I, I reached out to you and then obviously, you know, with the prep week and, you know, and, and jumping on board, there was still like a little bit of, you know, lag time, um, you know, in there. Um, but just the amount of time since I started the challenge by now, so it's been about two months. So by now, if all the other programs that I've ever done, I would have already plateaued or I would have started to, to gain mm -hmm. because that was the other important key that I felt so much less anxiety was after the challenge, I just have to make it through the challenge, which I was already eating all those foods anyway, but it was just, you know, eliminating, eliminating some of the dairy, yeah. um, you know, and things like that were, that were a little bit of a shift, but I knew after that I'm going to be eating real food. Mm -hmm. And it's not that like when you do keto or something like that, and you know, for the rest uh, you know, at the time that you're on a program or on a plan that you're eliminating all these things. And what are you supposed to do when you want to live your real life? When you and want birthday cake to or me, a quesadilla. <laughs> right. And this to me was, okay, if I go and get gas from the gas station, I put the gas in the car, I'm driving, I'm enjoying the scenery. And I'm not thinking about what's happening under the hood, in the car, the pistons, the this, that, and the other thing. And it's just running, it's just doing its thing. And I knew that after the challenge, just incorporating PFC every three, that's what it was going to be. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to enjoy the scenery. And it's just, it's just working in the background. And it doesn't but have to be that all. Stop. Yes. Just yeah. stop obsessing about it all now. Like, yeah. Now you can live. Right. Um, right. And I think that a lot of other programs, you have to become like all consumed with it, mm -hmm. where it it takes over everything and becomes crippling where you feel like maybe you don't want to go to a party or something because there's all those, you know, the temptations that are there. Yeah. Where I can look at everything now through the lens of the, of PSC. Yeah. Like I told you for mother's day, I said, Oh, this is going to be my appreciation meal. I went da -da 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 -da, right down the menu and was like, Oh, you know what? I can pair this salmon with a glass of wine and it's PSC. And I can have that and maybe I don't want to, you know, do something else and have it be the appreciation. I'll and it was real another day. <laughs> right. And yes. it took, it took two, not even two minutes for me to look at that and go, okay, this is what I'm going to have. Where before I would have to look up the menu beforehand, have oh. anxiety. What am I going to, okay, what am I going to tell them that they need to take off, prepare it this way, blah, 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 oh where... God nobody has to know that this is happening. Like it doesn't have to be such a big deal. Yep. And you can just go to a party, pick your PFC and, and that's it. So that's, that's what I love about it. And you know, like right away you jumped in and you were like, oh my gosh, I get this. Like this is, and, and then you started doing, you were helping others in the challenge. You were literally making videos <laughs> yourself using the PFC cards, showing people how to meal prep. It was so cool. You became so inspirational to so many people. And now a lot of your videos are part of the challenge. <laughs> because it's good. So thank 
you for that. That's awesome. Yeah, it, um, it clicked but... right away. It made so much sense to me just because, like, I do know, you know, just from my experience, so much about nutrition that just that missing piece, it was like right away I could latch on to it. And even my husband was like, so all you, all you have to do is just change this little thing because we have all this food in our house right now. I'm like, yeah. And it was, it was amazing. So wow, that makes me so happy. I'm just yeah. really, really, really thrilled for you. Um, and the fact that now you're going to be able to just start, I feel like for you and having a family, it's like uh, how we raise our kids to have a healthy yeah. relationship with food is so important. And you're going to start that foundation off so strong with Teddy yeah. being able to share like what it means to be healthy and strong versus like worrying about mm -hmm. your weight, right. And things like that. So I think that's really exciting. Um, yeah. One last thing I want to ask you though about is the fact that you are a new mom and you don't sleep and <laughs> you have I, time because you're working and doing all the things. What, uh, how, like talk about how this integrates in and how you've had time for it because that is probably the number one pushback I have is just time mm -hmm. for busy working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So I knew, um, I think the prep week was super helpful because it gave me a chance to sort of practice what was going to kind of become the rhythm and routine to make me successful. Yeah. So I know that you've talked about it before, the book, The Slight Edge, that talks about all those little habits that you do every day that really are going to move the needle in the right direction. Yeah. And so I just kind of played with the timing of things, knowing that he also eats every three hours. <laughs> so, and it's so crazy how once they become a little bit bigger, we actually ignore all of the nutrition that we know is important for growing healthy babies. Right. It's literally the same thing. You're feeding him a protein yeah. fat carb every three hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I tried to do, I mean, the schedule was inconsistent, but I knew that I could, if I meal prepped enough things and said, okay, so... Obviously, having a shake for breakfast is the best thing for me to do because once he starts crying and I know it's time for him to get up, I'm going to run downstairs, put his bottle in the warmer. I'm going to chug my shake. So now I'm taken care of. Yep. And then now I can take care of him. So I tried to be like one step at, you know, ahead of him, but kind of figuring out the different, um, the rhythms and routines of, of making it work. And I had certain staples that were meal prepped and ready. Yep. And another thing that I found really helpful for me too was, so whatever I, whatever I made for dinner, yep. I kind of kept another portion for me to have for lunch yes. the next day. Yes. So between the two shakes, and then I already have lunch because it was from dinner the night before, there's all those meals already taken care of. Yeah, and so then out of like five or six. Right. So then I just fill it. Yes. Yeah, so then I would just fill in with turkeys, like apple and guacamole. <laughs> so it was just trying to find those really quick um, things. Or even if I knew, um, you know, with my schedule, um, you know, it was a little bit tough with him kind of um, getting up in the middle of the night and, and all those things. So I know I had talked to you like, okay, so, you know, I, by the time I get up, I feed him, I'm up for this amount of time, should I eat something? And so I just ended up storing some bars up in, you know, upstairs. So smart. So, so I don't even have to come downstairs, try to figure out, you know, what I was, you know, going to have. And so, yes, yeah, some days, you know, I had the two shakes and half of a meal bar or whatever at night because I was up. I was up in the middle of the night and yeah. my body was sort of, you know, getting ready to, to eat after being up with him for, you know, two hours. I'm kind of past that point of like, well, oh, um, I don't miss those days. I gotta be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Your teenagers, all they want to do is sleep. So you'll make up for it. It's, it's totally opposite. But I think just, I really just, I wrote down like time ranges and I also mm -hmm. set a timer, um, on my iWatch for the three hours. So that way, I was paying attention mm -hmm. and not getting lost in everything that, you know, I, I needed to do it. for him yeah. and yeah. having those things ready. I could grab it really quick. I, you know, would, would throw him down in the docketot thing, which would mm -hmm. keep him safe for two. I you know, just two learned months. about those. I, yeah. by the way, those are crazy. It's, it's, it was so great, but yeah, so just, just figuring out those things 
um, made it so easy and it really doesn't have to take a lot of time. Yeah. Um, you know, the meal prep, even my meal prep, it was okay. So at the end of the night, after I would put him down, I would throw chicken in the oven, hard boiled eggs on the stove, like things that I could kind of walk away from right. and come back a couple minutes later, take them out, yeah. put them, you know, and put them in the fridge and then they're done. So yeah. I think that you absolutely can make time. The prep week will help you kind of practice um, and just play with the PFC cards to come up with, you know, some of those meals and just kind of memorizing some of those things, you know, like the proportions um, yeah. will really be helpful. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Such good tips. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I mean, you took all this time out. I know that Teddy was so good, actually. You were a little worried if he was going to be able to handle his first interview. <laughs> That's so sweet. Well, thank you so much. I can't wait to continue to hear how your progress is and how you can continue to like just rock it and just be the best mom and wife and woman you can be. I'm so excited. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Yeah.